What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you my top five meta decks for the January 2019 format. Not a lot has changed too much since we've entered 2019. We did get a ban list about a month ago and that kind of changed things up a bit. But going into 2019, maybe you're a newer or returning player and you haven't really caught up on the meta too much. Maybe with Christmas or the holidays, you kind of wanted to reinvigorate your passion for Yu-Gi-Oh! So this video is to make sure that you guys are up to date on the best decks so that you know what to prepare for when going into any high tier competitive event. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss a single upload. And if you really love the content that I produce on my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member because it's thanks to the support of those like Andre as well as Jason that I'm able to bring you this content on a daily basis. So if you're interested, hit the join button down below or check out the links in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting off with number five, we have a deck that I honestly never thought I was going to put on this list, but after looking at some of the trends I've been seeing and analyzing overall representation of events, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put Prank Kids at number five. Yeah, so Prank Kids was a breakout deck that happened to take first place at YCS Milan. And immediately after that, I went on record by saying that I really don't think this deck is going to catch on. Yeah, sure, because it got first place. Of course, some people are going to try it out just to see you know, if the deck is actually good. But just from looking at it at first glance, I really didn't think it was all that. But to my surprise, and I think to the surprise of a lot of other people, the deck is actually starting to catch on. We saw at the ARG not too long ago, I think, what was it, like three or four of the top 16 were prank kids. And I know ARGs aren't exactly premier events, but they definitely do attract a higher tier of competitive player because of their cash prizing. Even at the regional level, we've seen prank kids making it into the top four, top eight. And that's kind of crazy if you think about it. So I definitely think based on the representation that we've seen thus far, prank kids are definitely something to be a lot more wary of than at first glance. And we'll have to see why CS Sydney is only about a couple weeks away. And I think that's going to give us an idea to see if prank kids are the real deal. So for the meantime, you know, this is kind of like the question mark, like neutral, like no man's land area. But I definitely think prank kids have a lot more going for them than we first gave them credit for. They have the ability to tribute all themselves off to basically dodge any sort of effect negation, which against Sky Striker, it's really damn good for dodging Widow Anchors. Like, when you look at it in comparison to the Sky Striker matchup, which it actually has a very favorable matchup against, I think that's something to really take into account, especially considering Sky Striker's status on this list. So, you know, maybe it is one of the hidden gems of this format, but honestly, I think it's well deserving of this number five slot. We'll just have to see what YCS Sydney has in store in a few weeks. That is, however, going to bring us on to number four. And for number four, we've got a classic, at least of this format, Altergeist. Altergeist kind of moved down the ladder a little bit. I think it was number three on the last one of these that I did. And Altergeist, you know, Altergeist is a strong deck. There really is nothing wrong with it. You know, it is a little bit slow being a trap deck, but honestly, that doesn't hold it back too much because once Altergeist gets going, it just snowballs out of control and it can just take wins left and right. Altergeist has been able to top pretty much every single YCS as soon as, you know, Multifaker was released. So, you know, the deck has proven its worth and its viability especially at the competitive level. I think what I just don't like the most about Altergeist is that Coming from a control deck standpoint, there are better options. And yeah, Altergeist has some pretty decent matchups against the other meta decks. But when you look at it in comparison to what these other decks are capable of doing and the efficiency and the consistency at which they're able to do it, I just feel like Altergeist comes up short in these categories. Its ceiling isn't that high. You know, it struggles to get to its win condition in uh, Multifaker because if you can't get to Multifaker, quite frankly, it's going to be a really rough time for you. And because of the fact it's not as easily searchable as a win condition compared to other strategies, I'm actually favoring it a little bit lower than I did in the past. I thought because of other decks like Thunder Dragon being much higher in the meta that this would have a really good shot because it has probably the best Thunder Dragon matchup of any single deck in this top five list, but I don't think that's necessarily enough to garner it any higher than fourth place. The deck is still fantastic for what it is and definitely something you want to look out for if you're going to any regional 
or YCS level event, but just keep in mind, it does have its weaknesses, but it's still worthy of that number four slot. That does, however, bring us on to number three. And for number three, we've got another deck that's kind of solidified itself in the top five for quite some time now, taking on several different variants as the months have progressed, and that is Dark Warrior. Now, I want to go ahead and clarify here and say that Dark Warrior kind of encompasses like Goki, Ranga Miniad, like Turbo, you know, any of the decks that are just pretty much able to like do degenerate bullshit. Like if the deck's able to make Ranga Miniad and pretty much make it so that your opponent's unable to do anything to stop it, or if it's able to like Gumblar your opponent for six in tandem with stuff like Neo Spacian Connector, you know, that's kind of what I'm putting in this category because there's so many different variants and ways Dark Warrior can be built. And that's one of the things I like about it. But what's so cool about Dark Warrior is that with any two warriors, you're able to just go off into a Zold and just do some absolutely absurd and unfair things. And that's why I favor it much higher than something compared to Altergeist and Prank Kids because Altergeist, it's a lot harder to get that win condition being multi-faker. And Prank Kids, while they are a combo deck very similar to Dark Warrior, Dark Warrior is much more easily able to pull it off because Prank Kids, you need a specific composition in your hand in order for the deck to work properly. And if you don't draw certain cards, the deck can crumble under its own weight. Whereas with these Dark Warrior variants, these Goki variants, these Rongo Turbo, these, you know, Gumblar for six decks, if they just draw two warriors, which the deck is playing like 25 warrior monsters, yeah, statistically, this deck has much better odds. And I really like that just when you're looking at it from a deck building perspective. The deck ceiling is incredible. It's got so many extenders so that even if your opponent has hand traps, sometimes it doesn't even matter. Sometimes it's able to play through multiple hand traps, no problem. And with stuff like Call by the Grave, Magical Midfield Breaker, it's got so many ways to kind of alleviate those issues that it's an incredibly powerful choice moving into this format. If you don't already know the power that this deck contains, I would definitely study up because this deck is going nowhere. It's been getting first place at regionals all throughout the past month, ever since we got that new ban list, especially thanks now to Neo Spatian Connector. So definitely a big force in the meta and definitely deserving of this number three spot. Now that's gonna bring us on to number two. And for number two, we've got another Titan of the meta, and that is Thunder Dragon. So the reason I put Thunder Dragons here is because Thunder Dragons probably have the best matchup against the best deck, which if you haven't already figured it out, you know, Thunder Dragons just have a really good matchup because of Thunder Dragon Colossus. Being able to just shut down the ability for these decks to search on command, and not to mention they've got built-in protection, and you can establish multiple Colossus very easily. Yeah. That's really, really good. I don't necessarily think Thunder Dragon itself is like a good deck because the way the deck kind of just functions, I don't know, there's something just weird about it to me, but that doesn't take away from the fact of just how strong the deck is. It has been able to garner multiple tops across multiple YCSs. It's been tearing up the regional scene. There's different ways you can play that deck too. You know, the Brilliant Fusion build, the normal build, there's the Dinosaur build. Like there's so many cool things you can do with it. But going back to what I was saying earlier about achieving your win condition, I think because getting to Colossus is so easy, and because when you look at the other decks in the meta and how reliant they are on searching to get to their win condition, I think this puts Thunder Dragon in a very prime position to do very well. And I think that's gonna continue to be the case because it really hasn't lost anything. I mean, we still have three Gold Sark, like we still have everything the deck needs at three, so the deck is looking incredibly, incredibly strong. Now, we do have a ban list coming up in a month and who knows what's going to happen up to that point but for YCS Sydney or any regionals you guys might have coming up Thunder Dragons are going to be everywhere and there's something you definitely have to consider moving into this January 2019 format definitely well deserving of the number two slot but there is one deck that just outshines it and for the number one deck of the January 2019 format if you haven't already figured it out it's Sky Striker you know 
I feel like I talk about Sky Striker every single time I do one of these lists at the top, and you know, it's because it's the best deck. When you look at overall representation of YCS's, regionals, like Sky Strikers are just everywhere, and the reason for that is because the deck is just that good. Yeah, it's not able to shell out a ton of damage like some of these other decks, but realistically, it doesn't have to because its win condition is just grinding your opponent out of cards completely or always having an answer to anything they may have and that is the true embodiment of a control deck and yeah they may only be poking you for like 1500 2000 damage a turn but honestly if you have no cards to be able to do anything with or if they have an answer for every single card you play it doesn't matter what your life points are on because it's basically like they've already won the game from there with so many powerful tools like sky striker mobilize engage being able to search the entire archetype you've got multi-role which recycles every single card they play so you always feel Feel like you're behind as long as multi roll is on the field. You know, it's just such a powerful deck. It's so reminiscent of Zodiac in that respect that it's able to have been so resilient throughout all these months. And even with some hits on the ban list, and even with the ban list coming up, honestly, depending on what they hit, the deck may still survive. I mean, in the OCG, they have what? Widow Anchor at two, Engage at two, and Kagari at one, and it's still like the second best deck in the format. Like, how can a deck suffer so many hits? and yet be so resilient. That is just the power that Sky Strikers have, and that is why it has to be the number one meta deck of January 2019. But guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about your best decks of the January 2019 format. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again and we'll see you next time.